Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Manticore, the tier 10 British light tank. This one's located on the north spawn of Malinovka and under the command of the base man from hell. Game started. Well, you may have seen all the other videos yet. This is the last one in the sequence I've got at the moment, but uh, base man did say that he would give me some more replays on the Manticore if he gets the marks, um, like the second mark or the third mark, I'm sure he will get it eventually. As you know, it's a 1 in 5mm gun, capable of 390 alpha, and there is an enemy manticore on their team. And he's also done the same thing as Baseman, decided to go up to the centre line, and they're both going to meet. Yep, they both spotted each other, and rather than actually crest the ridge line and take fire, they decided to uh, yeah, just spy each other up, eye each other. Yeah, he's watching him. Artie tried to get a shot in. I think it was a very quick shot, so I don't think that Artie has actually moved very far from his spawn point. Oh, now he's taken around from the CS63, the Polish medium up on top of the hill. And that's emboldened the Manticore, the other enemy Manticore rather, to come up to that bush. Now the problem with that bush is that it makes it very easy for the enemy to spot any of our tanks going up the hill. And we've got a Rhinocerante and also an IS-7 going up there, so they are going to be threatened now by that, uh, that Manticore. Plus, if he moves a bit further, he might be able to get into the ramp, the dip. Uh, and uh, if he does that, then he really could threaten our team because um, anyone who gets into that ramp, well, and he is going for it, and he does take a round, but it's a low roll for 382, and he's in the dip. Yeah, the problem is, tactically, that's such a strong position. Unless you remove the enemy tank that's taken up that position, he might be able to spot the rest of your team and then enable the enemy RT to do all sorts of naughty business to them. Yep, he's already starting to do his spotting job. About the only thing you can do under the circumstances is get closer to the manticore to kind of limit his ability to pop up. Okay, he's kind of... Uh, well, he spotted a Wizzy 111 QL up on the, the hill as well now. Oh, well, he went down into the dip... Very good slide, actually. Now, again, that's another route to getting down the uh, the north side of the map uh, towards our cap area. If you go off the side of the hill like that, slide down to the bottom very quickly. And then, of course, you're in defilade. You can't get shot at because nobody can get a gun on you. In fact, the RT is the only one who can actually fire into that dip reliably and get a shot. And now the Wizzy is... Well, he's threatening to come out of that dip. But uh, Baseman's making a nest at the moment. He's actually knocking the trees down, which is actually providing, providing him and his teammates with masses of cover that they can then use to lay into that uh, whizzy. But as you know, the, the Manticore's only got 20 rounds of ammunition. It's not a lot. And as a consequence of that, he can't um, just blindly fire at the enemy. He needs to make sure his shots count. But he, what he does have is really great camo, which means although he's knocking down all these trees and everything, um, the enemy's not spotting him. And in fact, we are getting uh, spotting assist off this one. He's already up to 1.3k of spot. Now he's loaded all three shells. The standard shell 390 does 248mm of penetration and the APCR 268. You don't get much more than 20mm for that premium round, which seems a bit of a waste, really. Most people would just try to load the uh, the standard ammo. And he's got five rounds of HE just in case he can pen. And now we've got a T110E3 appeared. Right up on top of the hill. The Manticore's still there. And now he's been backed up by an E100. And there's a Badger on the spotting hill at F7. So the enemy is, is actually doing rather well. Despite this, and despite the fact they've got territory, 
they are losing by two tanks at the moment, would you believe it? But territory is more important than the number of tanks you've got. Well, at least it is in my book. And, uh, well, the enemy is down by 6,000 hit points as well. And they're about to lose some more. Yep, there you go. Sia 63 is dead. Trouble is, now they've got a 277 in that dip. Uh, so it's going to get pretty crowded in there. And that does present a bit of a problem for the Manticore. The enemy Manticore, that is. Because there's not much room to move about. And that kind of hinders your ability to do your job properly. Either to spot or to shoot at the enemy. So I kind of think that they'll be kind of crawling all over each other in that ramp. And the Manticore's decided to come out there. He's obviously been very frustrated. And he's taken around a big hit for 490. I think he's so frustrated now that there's not a lot he can do. He's heading back to the dip again. I think he realised, oops, I made a bit of a mistake. And oh, that was nasty. That was a shot from one of his own teammates. Shot baseman in the rear. It was the Death Star who did it. Now, maybe that was a misplaced shot that was actually aimed at one of the enemy and accidentally hit Baseman. But it could also be that the Death Star is frustrated that Baseman's not actually moving about to actually spot the enemy and instead decided to put one up his rear. Okay, he's been spotted again, so he does need to move because even though this tank is very, very small, low profile, it can still be hit. Okay, he's done a dipsy doodle. Oh, we lost the IS-7 taken out by their Object 277 on the ramp. He's actually come out the ramp now, the 277. He's to our right, only a short distance away. The Manticore's gone. Now, base man might be able to get shots on that 277. Where are you? There you are. He's still got the standard ammo. The 277... He's still there. He's just the other side of the ramp, I think. The, uh, or just out of the ramp. Just behind that little hill. The problem is that that uh, Wizzy 111 QL is still there. And 60 TPs with him. And if he tries to go down and deal with the 277, he's going to get guys shooting in his side. So he's just holding place at the moment. The Badger's moved up. We're three tanks up on the enemy now, and we're massively up on hit points. 6,000 up on the enemy. So they've been losing hit points like mad. The 277 is, well, he's on that little hill just above the ramp, and he's dead. Yeah, went too far. And now we've got the QL. Oh, there's the barrel of a dead tank. Oh, lovely shot. 394 high roll. The Wizzy's down. This is going to really frustrate the enemy now because they're down to just five tanks. They did have all the position. They were basically winning by territory, you might say. But now they're losing and losing badly. And in fact, you can see some of their tanks are retreating. I think that 60 TP up north is isolated. And they just spotted the T-92 HMC, the enemy RT, who's pulling back rapidly because he suddenly realized he was spotted. Okay, did some spotting on the T-92. He's now up to 5k of spotting. Now, is he going to try and spot that 60TP? Well, he's trying to spot the E-100 and the Badger at the moment. And he's going to put around into the side of the Badger. <laughs> oh, the 60TP is trying to hit him. And, oh, he almost ran into the E-50M. And the Badger comes up. And he's trying to get the E50M as well. Okay, now we've got the Hesh Barn and the Death Star both going after the 60TP. Here he is. There's only four enemy tanks left now. Now he might be able to get up here on the hill and shoot down, but uh, remember there's, uh, there's a lot of his teammates there as well. Instead, oh, he just tracked himself there. Had to burn his repair kit, otherwise he couldn't be sitting around forever. 
And the badge is a one shot. He can take it out. Oh, he doesn't have to. E100. Yes, he can one shot that guy as well. Oh, but it hits the tracks. In fact, it looked like it hit the, the shielding over the tracks. But the E100 is dead, which means now the 60TP is the last enemy tank alive. And everyone's diving in to have a go at him. There he is. Hello. Oh, lovely hit. 345, but he's not a one shot yet, but he will be momentarily. Okay, so one shot now, but we're not loaded. And the kill shot comes in from the E100 from way, way down by the lake. Here's the end of battle results, and that was the second class tanker for the baseman from hell in the Manticore on Malinovka. He got a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage. A fire effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle, and he got a patrol duty because he was the only one spotting at least six enemy tanks whilst they were damaged. In fact, it was really helpful that he was up in front after making that little nest because, after all, he was the one that was watching the tanks as they were getting hit. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, we can see that he didn't get the highest damage in this game because that went to the Heshbarn on his team with 4,244 hit points of damage. The second highest damage was the Badger, who managed to get uh, 3,477. That was the enemy Badger. And then it's the T110E4 on his own team with 3,428. Followed by the FV215B. That's the British Heavy Tank, 3,298. And we can see that uh, Baseman is a little further down the table. He's actually managed to get 1,464 hit points of damage during the game, but unfortunately he didn't get any kills. The highest number of kills was the Heshbarn with three, uh, alongside the Badger on the enemy team also got three kills. And you can see there's a number of tanks that managed to get two kills apiece, including the E4, the E100, the FE215B, the Heshbarn. And on the enemy team, only one tank managed to get two kills, and that was the Object 277. In fact, there was only three players on the enemy team who actually managed to get a kill at all. When it came to base XP... It was Baseman, yes. All that spotting really counted. 970 base experience points to him. 880 went to the E50M. And 806 went to the T110E4. He fired five rounds in that game. Got five direct hits, but only four penetrations. The shot that missed was the one that hit the E100. And it must have hit the shielding that goes over the tracks. And that acted as space armor. And that's why it didn't pen. 1,464 hit points of damage. All of it done at close range. One hit received, and that was the shot from the FV215B, the friendly shot up the rear. Now, I tend to think that maybe that was a shot that was actually aimed at one of the enemy and accidentally hit uh, base man. I'm being charitable. Uh, seven enemy vehicles spotted, five enemy vehicles damaged, no kills, but 7,215 hit points of spotting assist. So, really big game on spotting. He earned 42,586 credits from the game, 40,000 from personal mission payout, and he suffered no damage even after that shot from his teammate. Uh, and it was just ammunition and consumables that he actually lost. So his total came to 59,129 credits profit. 970 XP times two for the first victory, took away 2,910 experience points altogether. So pretty good game, actually. And as he says, um, how to bring the game back from the defeat? Well, it was, to all intents and purposes, it looked like the enemy had all the cards in their favours. They uh, they conquered the hill, they had the ramp. In fact, they had more than one cat tank on the ramp, but they just couldn't pull it off. And in the end, uh, they just acted as uh, mobile ducks for the his teammates to shoot at. Which was rather nice. So, um, nice bit of spotting from Baseman, a uh, nice bit of credits, and a couple of awards. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. <laughs> and thank you for watching.